One major fight is going to decide this map without a shadow of a doubt. There's the headshot. Needs one more. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to the Guns of Boom Challenger Series Week 2. My name is Falcone, and joining me for EU and NA, it is, of course, your favorite Guns of Boom caster. It's Lethal. I wouldn't say favorite, but you may you're be. my favorite. Oh, that's right. That's the, main, that's the main thing. But yeah, it's great to be back. It's uh, been a while since I've done one of the Cups, and it's nice to do the whole uh, summer season. Yeah, it's, it's, it was actually your first time here in the summer season, isn't it? Because obviously we had a few technical difficulties the first few weeks, but we're back. This is now what we're calling week two, and we have got plenty of games coming up. We've got EU and NA coming up. We just had Challenger, we, sorry, Pro Series Brazil last weekend, which the both of us were at, along with a few others. That was a lot of fun but these players never rest. There's a lot of games to get through and they want to win as many as possible in order to qualify for Pro Series Germany coming up later this year. That's right. Brazil was very interesting. There was a lot of matches where you could predict, but with Lazarus' impact, that was a great final. You know, Even though it was 4-1 in favour of impact in the end, I was actually quite surprised how dominant impact were because you know they said it even before they came into the Pro Series, they were like, you know, we not only want to win, we want to win it convincingly. And that shows a lot of confidence and attitude going into it. And they actually, even at the end, some of the players were like, oh, we wish we won it 4-0. And, and I was <laughs> like, really? You, you, you know, you're not just glad you won? But I think that is the mentality and attitude to have because those kind of players, those kind of teams are the sort of people who will actually create a dynasty in this game. Right, yeah. I mean, and it's something we see quite often in Guns of Boom. It's one of the things that at least I've learned uh, being quite new to the game myself is that actually a lot of the series do go 3-0, 4-0, -oh, -oh, whatever like that, because the skill gap in Guns of Boom is actually really, really wide. Yeah, it's quite surprising because some people aren't too sure what to expect. But, you know, we've had these tournaments now for the last year and the skill gap has slowly increased. And, you know, even with Lazarus when they lost the grand final, I think it was great that they were there because if they met him at the Gods of Boom event, then they wouldn't know what to expect. But now Lazarus, teams like them, know not what to work on and how to actually push on from there. So I think that's a great experience for them for that Gods of Boom event in July. Of course, that is all offline stuff. We are now moving online, which is a little bit of a different ballpark. <laughs> uh, EU qualify at first. We're going to be covering, of course, the semifinals and the finals as per usual. And I believe the first of the semifinal games will be between Edge and Noble, Harry. Well, this is going to be a slobber knocker straight away because it's nice that I actually get to cast Noble because I haven't seen Noble in such a long time since uh, probably the kickoff stages back in IEM. But we know what Edge are like, you know, they are one of the gods of the online tournament scene. And even though they haven't won their first match offline yet at the previous pro series and previous events in season one, I want to see what they can do here because they want that Gamescom place after not qualifying for Brazil in the uh, Spring Challenger. Uh, just a slight correction on what I just said there. Apologies. They're not Noble anymore. They are back to back. And it looks like we're jumping straight into the first game here, Harry. Yeah, there's no messing around here. They obviously, Noble want to try and make a massive statement coming into this after winning that first one. But so far, two members of Infinity on edge there have taken a little bit of damage so far. But I love what back to back are doing here. They're just playing it safe, playing it passive, and waiting for that first opportunity to push in. This map does tend to be very passive, doesn't it? And then the explosions start to happen in the middle of the map as Mix does take down uh, Ready there. Sorry, Massive. And it's three down already for back to back now, which is great start from them. And now I've got to get ready for that next wave. One of them, even, uh, even KM there, just barely manages to survive. But even with that sniper, he can at least sit back and let one of the members go in front to take the damage and try and stay alive as much as he can. But not too much of a surprise there being a stalemate situation. That's deadly. Looks like he's going to get taken down. Yep, by Nokia there. And Hell takes down Nokia after that. The, uh, the back and forths are starting to come in here. Can, which of the teams can survive, deal the most damage, take the uh, least damage. That is how we're going to start to see a lead there as the grenade launcher comes out there for Migs, takes down Stason very convincingly with a double on him. Yeah, that was a great double from Migs there. Great way to continue things off here. And already fall down now for Edge. They seem to be getting fall down quite a lot and becoming you know, a bit sparse on that death cycle. Stace is trying to do what he can here, just to try and get as much damage as he can. But Hell is in a good spot right now. Not really many people are actually challenging him here, but he's going to stay his high ground and just try and feed info for his teammates. Yeah, uh, Infinity actually starting to come back here as it looked like it looked for a second that like they were going to finally overtake back to back, back to back, pushing forwards again with KM taking down Hale, Mix taking down Deadly, and KM, was that a double limb there? Getting Stason as well. Uh, the 
They're getting a lot of work done and now have pushed 40 points ahead. I think the main thing as well with back-to-back, -back, they're getting the team wipes perfectly. Not just two or three down and one person hiding from the next person. They're getting it done every single time. And now Gonzo is trying to get a snipe of his own here. Just trying to push him back onto spawn as much as he can. That's not the case. Stacey managed to stop him with a great flank from him. Mix managed to get a trade there on Stacey, which is a big play from him. But as you see, the knock is trying to get as much damage as he can before he gets taken down. But it doesn't anyway. Gonzo managed to take out Hale there. And now again, three down for Edge. Yep, back to back. Just steadily maintaining this. It was 40, now 60 point lead. Mix just surveying the situation here as we. We take a look at Infinity. Hale sees some guys to the right there as the whole of the team are in the center for back to back. Nokia running out, does get one limb, but gets eliminated himself there as Gonza oh. loses a little one on one against Stason. And uh, yeah, Infinity have really evened out the playing field again. Yeah, Infinity are doing a great job now. They've got map control, but they need to figure out a way on how to abuse it as much as they can. And as you can see, ready straight away without high ground play. Managed to take him down one, managed to take down two, but. Okay, I'm just trying to stay up as much as he can. He's going to pull back, which is the right move to do, to try and wait for the rest of his teammates to spawn. Mix managed to get two, but now Nokia's just trying to stay up as much as he can. But KM with another double elimination, just to make things, you know, sort into the wounds, you could say here, Dan. And now only a slight lead for back to back here. Yeah, Nokia just gets taken down. I was going to say he's so low on health as Migs with the grenade. It looks like he's going to get taken down as well. Deadly gets a nice little double there as Edge now have taken the lead convincingly. They're 30 points ahead almost. Uh, back to back, we've got some serious work to do. We're getting to the last minute of the game and only a few points remaining until Edge take it away. Edge Infinity managed to get three, three down in the end, but just waiting for them to come back out. But Nokia and Migs managed to cause a bit of trouble there for them to get two down. And Reddy doing a, such a great job here. He's been doing so well, staying alive and just being an absolute nuisance. He's going a little bit too far into the open, but Gonza managed to take him down anyway. And now it's getting close to that mark now. One minute left with 40 points remaining. I, I think anything could happen this game, Harry, as Hale, whoa. What was that? Was that double elimination to that end the was, game? That was. That was a double straight at the very far end Whoa. there. And I was quite surprised because I thought to myself, a bit of a stalemate situation. We were kind of, you know, considering the circumstance of what's going to happen. We thought it was going to be slightly slower. But yeah, back to back, they weren't really mucking around at the end. They're just a very aggressive team and took them off guard. Yeah, that was a real surprise at the end there <laughs> to see Edge take that one down. Um, they 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 were losing the whole time. They came back at the end. That little double elimination was... I love seeing stuff like that in Guns of Boom. Because of the way that the streaks and the battle achievements work, the way that you can just turn the tide of battle just like that. We saw it quite a few times in Pro Series Brazil. And this, this was a great example. What an exciting end. Yeah, it was great. Like, you know, I think... It's quite a hard one because I think Infinity didn't actually expect it because when they saw there was one minute left and the, uh, the scores were actually quite close and near the ending point, they just assumed it's going to be one of those stalemate situations. They're going to be trying to get as much damage as they can against each other. But, you know, back to back, we're like, no, we're not having that. We're going to play that more an off-lock style towards the end of the game and just be very aggressive, which is very risky. But, you know, higher the risk, higher the reward there, as you can see. So we're cycling through the players there to see who did all of the work corrupt with 153 points. Well, both teams doing pretty well there. Migs on 137, Massive Ready on 119. So it looked like corrupt so far from the ones I've seen uh, was the was the MVP of the game. Yeah, not too much of a surprise. I think with Migs, you know, he's one of those unorthodox players. It's quite hard to determine what he's going to do and what he's not going to do, which is why he's such a great player. Same with Gonzo as well. Mm -hmm. But in that kind of uh, retrospect there, it's one of those things. Normally, if I was playing and it was, you know, the score was that close to the limit and there was one minute left, my first instant thought was, right, guys, let's sit back, let's yeah. get the high ground, let's try and get all the angles, get the crossfire ready in case anything does happen. But back to back were just so aggressive. It's, it's like I said, you know, I know the high risk, high reward, but that was very risky. But it turned out what, uh, great for them in the end. Yeah, well, I, I guess they they had to had to do what they could in that situation. Uh, I'll tell you what, Harry. If I was playing, I would just be hiding in a corner. <laughs> there was no way that I could effectively contribute to my team in any way whatsoever. I think that's the only times where they're opposite. I'm actually the one who's super aggressive. <laughs> I'd rather be the one, you know, suffocating you on your spawn, but. Again, it depends on oh. how the situation pans out. I mean, like, you know, yeah. if you've got like, your whole team and you've got like a 10, 20 point lead, it makes sense to sit on spawn just due to the fact that you want to wait for them to come to you. You'll get the first shot every time. 
But, you know, banter back, we're just like, no, we're not, we're not having that. We're going to get you now because at least that way, in that kind of retrospect, we can just go straight in and stop you from getting any kind of uh, defensive setup there. I guess we are opposites today, Harry, because, you know, <laughs> you're the blue, I'm the red, so you got the black shirt. I do white. wear a lot of blue, so. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's good. It's nice. So I kind of stick out a little bit with the blue background we got, the blue screen and the blue jacket there. And then there's just me in the red. It means you have to uh, wear red every week now. You know that, don't you? <laughs> It's okay. Just just look a little bit, a little bit of a sore thumb here, as it looks like we are <laughs> going to jump into our second game of the day. Any moment now. I thought it was starting. I was wrong. There we go. No, no, there we go. It is starting. <laughs> it's starting now, finally. And as you can see, straight away, back to back, going for that B point, which is uh, quite a rare case. Normally, you go C uh, for the A and C points, but they go for the middle one straight away, being quite risky. Oh. But it's probably because of the fact that when you go for that B point, you need to try and, if you get it, then it's very hard to get back. So that's more than understandable. But in terms of fragging potential back to back, we're doing a very good job getting three down now. Ow. Deadly getting a nice trade there. But we'll have to see what back to back can do for the next wave. Yeah, KM got a nice little double limb there. And, uh it's like back to back, uh, sort of got a steady lead by taking control of two of the points here. Uh, they're also doing a great job of just eliminating the members of Edge. Killing Machine on a roll there with two more eliminations. Going to do some great work at co uh, covering those points. Yeah, he finally gets taken down in the end, but Gonzo has to get the trade off on Ready. Ready, you know, I've not seen too much from him, but he's a great play. He seems to always know all the angles and try and keep him at bay. It's completely understandable, and you saw Gonzo there with a nice double to, you know, continue keeping him at bay here. Deadly gets a nice another trade, but it's very back and forth. Nothing too much stands out here. Stassen, as you saw, was trying to get that, that G launcher into the B point just to cause as much damage as possible before getting taken down. Wasn't the case, but now three down for back to back, and they need to try and find an answer here on spawn. They do as Edge are doing a great job now of taking control of the points. If they can capture B, which it looks like they are going to, two out of three, that is enough to win the game in the long run. But Gonza and Back to Back come back and they take down the uh, the other members on point B and they're going to do their best to take it back now. That seems to be the case. Delhi get a nice double, but Mix and Gonza managed to trade them off perfectly. Stays with another one. So there's only one member left for each team. But, you know, at the moment, Gonza's in the right spot. He's yeah. getting in that B position whilst the everyone else is actually on spawn trying to push up. But Delhi managed to clean up anyway, but also managed to stop him getting the point on top of that. Killing Machine with another one for himself. It's going to try and look for that double. Gets the damage done, but sadly, it wasn't the case. You have a 100 point lead now back to back, which I know isn't as significant in control points that can turn around quite quickly if Edge can get the point but that is a big if as deadly does take down gonzo and it looks like he is uncontested at the point but killing machine does take down his opponent on point b and that looks like that's going to be his yeah infinity managed to get free down there but they need to try and get off spawn try and get something going because the lead is going in favor back to back more and more now but deadly with a nice double there and the perfect aim to clip is a triple from deadly now Whoa. just to try and push up there and now this is their opportunity to try and come back and get these B and A points. That's the first triple that we've seen all uh, all day so far, actually. And it's been a lot of doubles, a bit elimination streak now, Deadly. And uh, he does get taken out eventually. Yeah, that's understandable. Deadly did so much work there. He was more than happy to get taken down after that four or five frags. Uh, streak there, but Ready must get one of his own, but I think it's too little too late here. Back to back, only got 40 points remaining. They need to try and get something done now, but I think we're going to need miracles here, Dan, but that is back to back with the second map in favour of them. Yeah, uh, tying up the series by the look, looks of things. Um, and that was a much more dominating performance. All the way through they were ahead. Yes, there was a little bit of a comeback here and there from Edge, uh, but they were consistently ahead all the way through. Didn't let up with those control points. And that's exactly uh, that's exactly what you have to do in control points. You just hold on to them, defend them with everything you've got. Yeah, normally you see the better teams are the ones who actually do better on objective. TDMs, it can be a bit of a coin flip. It's very situational. It depends on the scenario, what you put yourself in from the start to the finish. And, you know, there's a lot of there is extra strategy in TDM, but then there's other strategies also in objective play in the control point of the hill where it does favor the better teams. But, yeah, that was kind of a statement from back to back to saying, you know, we're not done yet. Yeah. <laughs> They're not done yet in the slightest. I mean, again, looking back at the first game, it's not like it was a stomp from Edge. Like, it did look like it was going to be back to back's game for most of it and Edge came back. But that game was very much back-to-back. So all the way through, they had control of the whole situation. 
they were very comfortable. It looks like they are the more confident team, the more comfortable team. If I had to guess, Harry, I would say that the next game is looking more likely to go back to back's way. Yeah, it wouldn't be too much of a surprise. It depends on the other TDMs as well and see if any objective games, uh, sorry, maps come in favour of this edge team. Okay. Um, with Farming Complex, it can be a bit of a weird one, but like you see a lot of control points in the past where you know you get a team which is winning by two, three hundred points, and then it just flips around. A great map for that is Europe Square. We see that all the time. Well, okay, not all the time, but I feel like we see it too many times, and it's quite weird how that actually stands out. But yeah, it really will depend on map choice. Here. Noble, yeah. sorry, back to back, will actually want to try and win another cup just to kind of you know increase their scoreline even further going into this next cup as well. Yeah, I mean it's a very different skill set that goes into TDM and control point specifically they're like opposite ends of the spectrum because control point you there's so much to keep track of uh, and i'd say that's where communication is the most important trying to stay with your team work out which point you need to be covering maybe you're in a situation where holding on to two is good enough maybe you want to go for the third maybe you have to go for the third or otherwise the other team are just going to win that's right. No, even with communication in general, like the most important part of comms is normally small talk. Like the very little things saying I'm behind you or I'm going to go here whilst you go A or the little things like that is so, so, so important. And I know some teams don't even use communication. They would rather actually prefer their chemistry and the latency, which I can understand to a certain extent. But so weird to me, Harry. It is so weird. It is weird. I know. Maybe in a, in a duel or 1v1, you obviously don't need to, <laughs> you don't need to communicate to your opponent. But, but what, what, is, what, is chemistry, like, what is chemistry without talking to each other? That's the part I don't understand. Um, it's an interesting one because um, back in the day, my, my team used to do that as well. Like, you really? know, we, we obviously we had the opportunity to talk to each other, but maybe in a scrim, we, we just literally would not talk just to try to improve our chemistry. Like, the natural ability of what we should be doing with our tactics okay. and all that bits and pieces. But it's a bit of a hard one because even though it comes to boom, it's very hectic, it's very messy, but there is a lot of in-depth things to actually go into it now. But we will be going into our third map now. Another TDM. So I'm not too sure if Back to Back will be happy about this, but I know this is one of their better TDM maps. Oh, Killing Machine gets a really nice position straight away there, although it doesn't work out as Edge Infinity pretty much take out the entire team. That's a little <laughs> double a limb and a dance there. That's what you like to see. Showing his confidence already. I think he knows that even though it's one of Back to Back's better TDM yeah, maps, you know, they seem pretty confident anyway. But we've got Gonzo with a frag. Nokia gets another one, gets a nice double of his own. He is looking for that triple, but I don't think it will be the case here as he does get traded off by a deadly bear. As Gonza tries to back up Killing Machine there. Killing Machine's gone right in. Does take down Deadly quite convincingly. Throws the grenade as he backpedals, trying to stay alive, but doesn't quite manage it. But Migs does get the revenge elimination there. And Edge have crept into a very slight lead, although it's going to be very back and forth for a little while, I expect. Yeah, even though back to back have been very aggressive and suffocating them on spawn, it's given Infinity a chance to sit back and let them get the first shot. As you can see, a nice double elimination from from Killing Machine there, and he's just trying to get another one. Gets a nice triple there, straight through the window. Great stuff for him. Look for that, for that four at once, but it's not going to be the case. Reddy just managed to back off. I think his teammate said, back off, back off. Don't want to give him all four at once, because that's going to cause so many more points added for back to back. And that has, but great stuff from KM there. It has propelled them into the lead. Well, it did for a moment. I mean, now, uh, Edge Infinity have almost caught up again. In fact, yeah, they've caught up and overtaken, thanks to the double in there from Stason as KM back, back to it there. It takes down Hale, doesn't manage to get a double again. If he did get that four at once earlier, which it looked like was maybe going to happen. That would have been very spicy, I'm not going to lie. Like, I thought he was going to get it because the other guy was actually... Uh, Reddy was damaged enough to get taken down for the snipe, but he backed off perfectly because he would have had so much points by then. It would have been absolutely ridiculous. But looking at it now, two down now for Infinite. Slowly back to back, our game map control, but Hale is having absolutely none of it as he's trying to take one. Managed to take two. Oh. And he's trying to look for a third, but Mix managed to trade him before. He managed to get that triple elimination. Again, we're really seeing how important these battle achievements are, although, thanks to Gonzo with the little snipe there, back to back almost oh. tied it up, but Deadly and Hale take down Nokia and Gonza, getting some serious work done here. Back to back have some work to do in order to come back. Uh, they are 40 points behind. We're getting close to the uh, to the match. Limit. Yeah, I think it's going to go to the wire now all the way so far. <gasps> Nokia did such a great <gasps> job helping him there, but Gonza got a great snipe on him there, but. At this stage in time, Infinity are just on their spawn. Then back to back, got four map control. They can do it, anything they like, but not with stats. And get a nice clean start. He's trying to actually push it in now. Nokia's trying to do what he can 
to try and get a flank going, but there's a bit of a struggle here for back to back. But now Inf Infinity just managed to edge oh. lead, managed to get two before getting taken down by Mix. Seven points in it, Harry. This game is so close. It could go either way. Edge marginally ahead, but Killing Machine takes down Hale, retakes the lead there. And the next few limbs are going to be very, very important. As Gonza takes down Deadly, he's going to back off, trying not to get eliminated himself. Only six points in the lead back to back. <clears throat> oh, and as you said, a knock, it does get. Managed to take him down, but gets traded by Stassen straight away. Only 15 points in it. One point in it between these two teams now. Hell with a great snipe. He's going to try and look for a second if he can. But Mick now trying to push around. Stassen gets one more to, to add to the tally. Gets traded, and it's going to be all the way to the wire, like I mentioned before. Only 18 points for back to back to try and win this. But Infinity can easily change that around. Oh, Harry, I don't know what to say. This is this is insane. This is how we want to start the broadcast today. That's for certain. As Mastiff goes with the G-Launcher, doesn't get in a limb. I think he did manage to score the damage on, on Killing Machine, though, and that could make all the difference. Killing Machine low on health is bad news for back-to-back. And it's going to be a stalemate now, but they're going to both play very passive to see what they can do. They know both, all the players on both teams are really <gasps> trying to do what they can, but Killing one Machine point. does get that snipe, but only one point back to back need, but it's going to be one frag between these two teams. Let's oh, get taken down and back to back match to take map number three oh, oh, oh. into the series. That was <laughs> so close, and I was, wasn't really too sure because all four members of both teams were so weak. It's just a matter of who's going to get that first pop shot off, but you saw their back to back. Managed to get it, and whew, that was a nice little map free, but it's been a great series, as you said, from the start. That was just a fantastic way, yeah, exactly, just to start the European broadcast. That, that was, I mean, obviously, I, I did the uh, the week one of the Challenger here as well, and this was the closest game outside of Brazil, because there were some pretty close games in Brazil. Oh, yeah. The closest game of, uh, of Guns of Boom that I've seen. It was fantastic. I'm not too surprised, ever because, you know, Infinity are one of the strongest online teams and back to back, they've been around since day one. And, you know, from the IM kickoff event, you know, where they absolutely smashed out the park, I'm not too much of a surprise that this is going to be a really close series. You know, you've got two stories here. You've got back to back who want to try and make it to Pro Series Gamecom, uh, sorry, Gamescom because of the fact that they haven't been to the previous two. But Forza also want to do it because of the fact that they missed out in Brazil and they still want to try and make some kind of statement at their first off, sorry, at their fourth offline event. Still just trying to sink in what happened there at the end of the game. <laughs> there was literally one elimination in it, right? Because yeah, that's right. It was, Edge um, Infinity needed nine points. Yeah. And uh, and back to back needed one point. Yeah, so literally it it came between one frag. And because everyone was so weak, you could maybe get, I don't know, one avalanche shot or yeah, one snipe right. shot. But you saw there it was more the case of Infinity were a little bit too far back and more relying on actually sniping their opponent rather than actually going in. But of course, you know, we're back to back having so much map control, it's very hard to push out. But I think there was just one member who kind of stood out a little bit on the side of Infinity and managed to get picked off in the end. So it's a shame these things happen, but we're back to back. It was definitely well played, showing that, you know, they were not scared at all, no fear in whatsoever, especially on a map like that where, you know, there's so many sniper angles you can actually get on that map, it's very difficult to yeah. actually comprehend. Yeah, the, uh, these online cups are very, very important for those of you that have just jo joined in or haven't haven't watched before. The teams are competing for a spot at Gods of, uh, sorry, at Pro Series Germany. Gods of Boom is, is happening. It's a little, a little bit confusing the order. We'll talk about that <laughs> later. Uh, but they're competing for Pro Series Germany. They're gathering points. We'll be taking a look at the standings a little bit later on. But first place, we'll get 100 points. And that is, forget the prize money, the points is what the teams want today. We are going to go to a very short break. But don't go anywhere. More Gods of Boom Challenger Cup Week 2 coming up.
Welcome back to Guns of Boom Challenger Cup Week 2. And I very briefly there mentioned Gods of Boom. I'm going to bring that up again. Last weekend we had Pro Series Brazil. Before that we had Pro Series Texas. And now we, tomorrow there's a little event where we've got some European teams competing for another spot for Gods of Boom. That is going to be happening in Cologne in a few weeks. But this event here, Challenger Cup, these online cups, these are gathering the team's points, and these points go to qualifying them for the Pro Series, also taking place in Germany a little bit later, and then the the teams that win the Pro Series events, they then go on to the next, I assume, Gods of Boom after that. See, I can tell you, Daniel, homework, because that is a lot to remember, isn't it, to take in. <laughs> so even for me, I'm just like, yeah, this is that. But that's, that's a great thing, I suppose, because there's so many events, there's yeah. so much oh, happening yeah. with Guns of Boom, and especially if any new players or new teams out there, it's never too late to get involved. Even if you feel like it's, I don't know, if it's halfway through the season or anything like that, and you think it's a little too little too late, it's best to have the experience competing in the Cups ready for another season or another Challenger Series to actually try and qualify for them. So don't ever think it's ever too late. It's always good to have the experience yeah. on board as well. Yeah, Guns of Boom is very fun. It's very easy to get stuck in. It's very easy to find some mates and sign up to an ESL Cup. So, you know, if you're, if you're even remotely interested in playing this game competitively, I do encourage you to have a go. I kind of wish we could do it, but we're behind the desk and it'd be a little bit awkward trying to, you know, commentate commentate and play, and play at the same time we yeah. commentate over our own games <laughs> <laughs> yeah it would be quite difficult I don't think I would be able to do it but Knights of Honor versus Lazarus is our next series map number one here in Old Factory and now a little bit of a slow start going into this but Manny's going to find three people come straight into him but it's a bit of a trade off here but Lazarus did manage to win it in the end just by that one throw excellent with a nice double to clean things up uh, it's been a week Carrie, but I've missed seeing Lazarus doing what they do best and just Tom the competition. It's Divine King going to run in behind Johnny there. Lord Mano also assisting. Between them, they do take him down quite easily. Now Lord Mano just throw a grenade there, but T-Max going to run around behind him? Yeah, it gets the jump on him. Oh, that was very close. I love Mano's movement there. He was in a bad spot, but he tried to delay himself as much as possible for the rest of his team to try and help him out. But it was too little too late there. Managed to get picked off, but now we're going to see what they can do here. Romeo is still very weak. Trying to get stuff done, but managed to take someone down anyway. That's from Divine King. Doma managed to get a double of his own, and he's just going to try and stay alive and wait for the rest of Lazarus to come off spawn. But the Vikings very weak here, but managed to get taken down from behind. I don't think they even knew Excellence was even flanking that way. Excellency with the Blade Master there. Now he's going to fight with a little two on one, but does get taken down by Dobar. Dobar with the G Launcher gets damage on two more of the players there. And all of the damage counts, although Lord Mano does come back and get a nice little double limb. And that does push Lazarus forward a little bit more points wise, but they're only ahead by 15. Now even less than that. Hey, yeah, Divine King gets a nice double of his own before he gets traded off. Excellent trying to do as much as he can, but they get a very interesting trade there, which is quite rare in that kind of circumstance. But the Johnny Bay managed to get a frag back, but it's very close now. Five points in it between both teams. Ooh. One man behind him. Luckily, Excellent managed to call that out, get the info, clean things up. Divine King managed to get one of his own, but Excellent is very aggressive here, trying to get things done. And he managed to, again, get another frag on the board. Successfully does take down Notorious there, and now Dubar's going to run through the center of the map. Takes a lot of damage there as he fights against Divine King and Lord Mano. Uh, does take down, with t Mac. he does take down Divine King, and now Jani sticks up behind Excellency, but does get taken down himself as well. So 2v2, both teams have two members on spawn, but right now Romeo walked into two of them, which is unlucky enough. Does try and get a G launch, and managed to injure so many players there, but it just wasn't the case. Didn't manage to clean up, but I'm sure one of them will clean up, which they will. The Viking with a G launcher of his own, but now he's just going to sit back, wait for some info, wait for someone to push him. One member's pushed him way too far, that's Dejani there, but instead it doesn't matter. Mano and Romeo managed to get one each for themselves, and Lazarus is slowly increasing their lead. Uh, oh, it's not by much though, not at all now. Is it, for a moment there, after you said that, it looked like they were even. Lord Mano. Master's curse. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Lord Mano in the center of the map there. Divine King does lose a little snipe off Notorious as Notorious gets eliminated by a G launcher from Excellency. Excellency finds T Mac. T Mac has the high ground, but it doesn't seem to matter too much as he gets a lot of damage in and then just runs away. He decides he doesn't like the position. Does sneak up on Johnny there. Wow. That was a great play by Excellency there. He could have pushed in a little bit more, but decided not to. He was on his own. Three of his teammates away from behind. So those decided to flank round, get his side of the map control back, and push straight in. But now, 
26 points between both teams. It's going to slow down just a little bit, but not before Team Mac goes behind him, but not the case because Exiting knew he was coming around, but managed oh. to get a nice snipe there. Doma managed to get one and Romeo as well to tie things up. Notorious as well on top of that. Three members down for Lazarus, and Lazarus oh. need to try and think of a way to try and come back here with their entire team eliminated. Yeah, well, they're going to have to make one big push now without losing any of their guys. And hey, it's possible if the whole team just respawn, they're all going to be full health. They do, in theory, have a slight advantage, even though they don't have the map control as the action is just about to get started with the grenades coming out. Lord Mano and Romeo pushing around the corner. They're going to find Dobar and take him down very easily, running back to the center of the map now, though. All the members of Nuts of Honor are weak, so Lazarus can definitely come back from this. It's just a matter of how and when, but now the scores are almost uh, tied out. Divine King managed to get one of his own, but two of the members are so, so weak here, and eventually they will get taken down. The Knights of Honor with that first map win on the board over Lazarus. Very rare, we weren't really too sure what to expect because, like I said before, you know, the, the members of uh, Knights of Honor were actually very weak, but I saw what Mano and Divine King were trying to do there to try and pair up, to try and bait and switch, to try and push in, but it just wasn't the case. It was just way too weak, and Jug managed to take that first map. And again, it was, it was a very, very close game, and it did look like Lazarus had everything they needed to make that comeback. They, they made that push all on full health, but as you said, they evened out the score yes, but then their health were in total as low as uh, Knights of Honor's health. And unfortunately for them, Knights of Honor did manage to get that last vital elimination, taking the first game in this best of three. Yeah, you'll see a lot of the members of Knights of Honor had a lot of assists as well, which just shows their communication was on point. They were reacting to everything that needed to be done. But also their movement was key. They made sure to always stick together in numerous situations. But I feel like Lazarus, they also did a really good job. There was a few times where they put himself in a really bad spot, but you know, any other average player would probably continue to push in or continue to be aggressive or trying to be a nuisance. But you know, those little plays like that, coming back to go back with your teammates is so, so vital, but it just wasn't the case in the end. As I think when Knights of Honor took all four down for Lazarus, they had map control. It's just a matter of delaying the inevitable, yeah. I felt like. I mean, we highlighted uh, Excellency a couple of times there where he'd pick a fight, a little one-on-one, -on -one, maybe didn't like the position so much, maybe felt as though he needed to be somewhere else and would just bail out of the fight where you kind of feel like if you're in the position like the bloodlust would get you you'd want to finish that elimination <laughs> but no backed out found a different spot and yes got an elimination not the one he started but maybe one that was more valuable for the team yeah that's exactly what I was going to point out as well little plays like that are so valuable and actually change the whole situation of how the map will pan out and you know it's with Guns of Boom it's so so easy to be super aggressive it's so easy to get a little bit carried away but when you've got that sentiment of control in your gameplay, that is when you go from a good to a great player. As we go into our second map to see if Knights of Honor take the series of Lazarus can tie things up here. Yeah, Lazarus are going to be giving it their best shot. They're not going to like how they fell behind at first, but unfortunately for them, Knights of Honor do manage to, it looks like, eliminate the whole team at the beginning, which means they've got free row to get the control point. They're going to go for A, but Divine King and Romeo are going to get right in the way there. Divine King does take down Jani, and now it looks like all of Lazarus have taken down Knights of Honor again. That's what happens. It all comes in waves here. And as you saw there, Lazarus was trying to get that trip cap, but it wasn't the case. But I can understand why they did that, because they wanted to get much pressure done as much as possible. But Manu, with a little elimination streak of his own here, doing so much work to begin with, and now we're going to see what he can do here. So we'll try and get B, will get taken down finally after that nice streak. Dobar with a nice double of his own, will try and look for that triple, but it won't be the case. And Team Mac managed to get one down as well. So that's three down for Lazarus, and they've got to work out what they're going to do on spawn here. Yeah, that was a very dominating performance for a second there from Knights of Honor, who have now almost got the triple cap. Yep, it looks like they have got the triple cap now. No, A has been contested. Romeo takes down Notorious. And now Divine King and Excellent C are going to take back A themselves. That's pretty important. They're now down by over 200 points now. That's ridiculous, considering how early it is into the game. Only like about a minute to a minute and a half now, but we've seen it before and I'm sure we'll see it again. Now, as we'll make some kind of comeback here. They've got two of the caps, so they are going to try and trip cap if they can, but the trades are going left and right now. And B, it's so difficult to take, especially in that situation now, but Manu's going to try and get as much damage as he can before he gets taken down. Doma must get another one of his own before Romeo managed to trade it out. Excellence gets another one there. So it's going to be 2v2, but look at that damage done by T-Man. Oh. Great stuff there. 
And even though Romeo's trying to do as much damage as he can as well, also gets taken down. So that's three down for Lazarus again. And this is nice of an opportunity to try and increase the lead. But Mano, again, with another double to try and solidify things. Yep, excellent C now able to try and have a go at taking back B, the central point. Uh, although it looks like B is the only one they're going to have. And Torius going to try and prevent that by sneaking up behind Divine King, getting the Blade Master. Now Lord Mano is the one that's sneaking up with Romeo's help. It looks like they might be able to take down Member of Knights of Honor. Yes, successfully as a team they did it. But wow, the battle for Control Point B just continues as Dobar gets... Was that a triple limb? Yeah, that was a triple limb. Yeah, especially in the midpoint as well. There's so many players weak for Lazarus. He just walked straight in and then... Did his job, and Divine King now managed to get the trade-off in the end, but still the lead is saying the same. Dobar on an elimination streak now. He's going absolutely off here, and there actually seems to be nothing stopping him right now. Dobar on 219 points himself, but Johnny there sneaks up behind. Dobar takes that excellency. Uh, with a little bit of Johnny's help out, it's fair to say. And now Lord Mano does get taken down by Notorious with the double elimination. And it looks like, Harry, it looks like Knights of Honor have this one. Yeah, it seems to be the case there. Knights of Honor aren't actually weak at all. And it's just a matter of question what Lazarus can do here. Not so much, but Notorious knows, knows he can just basically stop him and pin him in their base. And Knights of Honor managed to take map number two over Lazarus. I'm a little bit surprised to see that, Harry, I've got to say. From everything I've seen in Guns Boom so far, you know, Lazarus being one of the top, if not the top, performing team in Europe. Uh, obviously, they came second in Pro Series Brazil last weekend, and now they're not even going to come first or second in this event, as they're going to be competing against Edge in the third place match next. Yes, yeah, uh, I'm not going to lie. It's a bit of a weird one, because I know uh, Knights of Honor actually took down Dust to Esports in the quarterfinals. Okay. And of course, we do have that direct invite qualification. So I'm wondering whether they're actually saving strats or anything like that. Because, oh, but don't get me wrong though, Knights of Honor is a very, very good team. They've been around since day one and they've always been on par with the rest of the teams. But I suppose they're putting importance, you know, they're basically prioritizing certain situations, which is understandable. But to say uh, Infinity versus uh, Knights of Honor, Infinity, I can understand, but Knights of Honor, it's nice to see him back in the final. Yeah, I mean, it, it's good to see it being mixed up a little bit. We were saying earlier that Guns of Boom has a very wide skill gap, and usually you do get a lot of 2 O's and 3 O's and best out of fives, etc. But it's kind of rare to see a team like Lazarus get taken down before the finals. Um, that being said, I remember when I was uh, casting with, with Kaplan, he was saying to me, you know, with Europe, you tend to find anything can happen, whereas with the Americas region, they're a little bit more consistent. Yeah, with the NA scene, they are very consistent. You always get some regions where the consistency is there, but EU, it's not. And people are probably thinking, well, why is EU so consist uh, sorry, inconsistent compared to any other regions? And it's mainly because there's so many good teams. There's probably eight teams you can think of. You know, it's like back to back. You've got Lazarus, you've got Elements Pro Gaming, you've got Knights of Honor, you've got Infinity. You know, there's lit dust to ease, but there's literally so many teams in the EU region right now who could actually compete for the top spot. It's absolute madness, to be fair. <laughs> Should we take a look at the bracket for this tournament so far and take a look where we are now as back to back took down Infinity. For those of you just joining us, Knights of Honor gets the 2-0 and against Lazarus, which means our final will be back-to-back -back against Knights of Honor. But our third place match will be up next, and that will be Edge Infinity up against Lazarus. What do you I expect to see there? I think both matches are going to be very close, you know, especially with the first one. I want to see what Knights of Honor can actually do against back-to-back, -back, just due to the fact that we know how good back-to-back -back are, but if Knights of Honor can kind of step things up even further. But I reckon they really could, considering how well they played against Lazarus. But Infinity and Lazarus in the third-place playoff, again, it's going to be a massive nail-biter. I don't think either of these matches are going to be 3-0. And if they are, then, OK, sorry, my fault, my mistake. <laughs> well, we'll be finding out very, very soon, so don't go anywhere. Plenty more Guns of Boom coming up after this.
Welcome back, it's Guns of Boom, and we are heading into our first, what, our first third place match? Our only third place match of the EU region. It is going to be Edge up against, surprisingly, Lazarus. Yeah, a bit of a weird one, but you know, like I said about the consistency before, it's not always there because there's so many good EU teams. Am, am I uh, too surprised about this? Yeah, no, it's, it's understandable because we know how good Lazarus are, but in, in the online world, in the online environment, we can never ever predict exactly what's going on but we can always predict them at least top eight top four minimum but in this case you know they will be batting for that third place playoff spot which is going to be very important because this season it's going to be one of the closest we've probably seen in mm -hmm. terms of point distribution so this third place playoff is going to mean a lot more to them than it did in the past yep again just to just in case you don't know what the point breakdown is first place team gets 100 points towards pro series germany second place gets 75 Third gets 50 and fourth gets 40. So you know, there is a lot in it. Uh, and a lot in the prize pool as well. I believe they mixed up the prize pool between season one and season two. They've changed it up a little bit. Now third place get $120, whereas fourth place only get $80. So it's $10 per player between it. It's, it, it's worth playing for. You know, it's worth trying to win. It's, it's extra money to go out with, you know, I can understand that entirely. But yeah, it's, it's of course, like none of these players think about the cash and it's all about the pride of yeah. actually trying to get the points. Because even though it's 15 for we, even though it's only 10 point difference, we may see it in the future where with the point distribution towards the end of the season where it's so close, it probably will come to that. And, you know, if you had if you've been in three third place players, for example, in the Cups, that's still 30 points if you win every single one. So Absolutely. these little things are going to be so, so important here. And I'm sure both these teams are going to be neck and neck going at it here. Let's be real, Harry. Like, <laughs> they care about the money, but they care more about the $40,000 potential prize that pool of Pro Series. <laughs> I know I would. <laughs> than the prize pool of this. So they want, they want the points to get to that, to get those prize pools. But no, honour is very important as well, obviously. These teams want to prove they're the best, like you were saying uh, about um, about last week, about Impact Gaming. Was it Impact? Yeah, it was Impact. Yeah. They're saying they want to win by, with, by a wide margin. They want to win. They want to get a 4-0. They don't want a 4-1. 4-2. What are you talking about? 4-0. Oh, literally, they're rolling in money. I can imagine Venom like just <laughs> in a bar full of money like with his sunglasses on, basically. He's probably already gone bought more shades ready for the, <laughs> ready for the concert boom event, which bar surprised me. full but. of money. <laughs> Amazing. I'm now picturing like like Breaking Bad. Have you seen Breaking Bad? Huge... I haven't actually. There's, oh, there's, well, there's this great image of this of this the security guard lying down on this huge bed of money. In That's it. Venom, basically. Okay. That's Venom. <laughs> Just needs some shades. Exactly. I mean, it will look literally picture perfect then. But yeah, it's um, it's going to be an interesting one. It's like I said before. I don't think either this third place player or the grand finals will be free. I reckon it will be close. But we are going to our first map. It looks like it will be Europe Streets Ooh. to start off with. Very interesting one actually, considering this map doesn't get played too much at offline events. But again, it's like it's very hard to flank around. You will see a lot of uh, standoffs here and there. But we'll see how things pan out between these two teams. I think I think we saw it once last weekend, the Pro Series Brazil, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's all about the sniping, really, isn't it? You know that we have some very good snipers on these teams as the game has started and uh, little lead so far for Edge. Nope, Lazarus have overtaken it. It's that back and forth stage early. It looks like Lord Mano going to try and take down Hale there if he can get an angle. Yeah, it was very back and forth. Ready got a double and then Excellence managed to rectify that and get a double with his own. Mano with a nice snipe kill there on on Hale. Managed to pull back just in time so he doesn't get taken down as well. Deadly gets one of his own. He's trying to look for a second here and I reckon he could actually do it depending on the circumstances but Mano's having no... I'm having none of that. He's going to step right in. Deadly Romo trade off and then Hale finally takes down Mano after the couple of snipe shops Mano had earlier. And it's going to slow down again for a second as Lazarus are creeping forward through the street there. He's got his eyes on Hale as... Wow, what's happening there? I don't think they even expected it. I think at I one stage, both players were looking at the middle and then all of a sudden they both came round. Mano tried to get behind the boxes, hoping that his teammate would be able to kind of like get him off him a little bit just so he can find out the situation, what's going on. But it was just too little too late. They both pushed perfectly at that time. And then Romeo and Mano managed to get another frag of their own and extend their lead only by, well, I was going to say 23 points, but now nine. Oh, double elimination there from the hail though, as Edge managed to creep themselves into the lead now. Lord Mano does get teamed up on by Mastiff Ready, and now Romeo keeps trying to get an angle on someone. There we go, he's found Mastiff, he does take him down with a little bit of help there. As Deadly, very low help there, he's just going to get hit by one shot. Oh, that was almost a triple for Romeo there, but Stassen finally managed to take him down. Mano managed to get hail as well. And as we can see, still going back and forth, but it looks like it's 
It's slowed down a little bit here. Infinity are just sitting very far back, waiting, just trying to scout for info to find out what's going on. And through that spot in between the boxes and the wall, it's a bit of a pain in the backside to try and shoot back at. So they're just waiting to see what they can do. They've got some bomb control here. Excellence isn't actually... Hasn't got too much health here, but Reddy hasn't either. He's trying to stay alive, but Excellence, great shots from him so far. With yeah. that incinerator finally gets one. He's going to look for Reddy as well, but it looks like they're going to try and collapse on them here as Romo gets one of his own. Held his trade, but I think things are going to stay a little bit slow here. Deadly found a very good angle on Excellency there. As Viking going to try and get sniped, but gets taken down himself by Hell. <laughs> Romeo snipes Saison and gets the double on him there, thanks to the Blade Master. As Lazarus now have a fairly convincing lead, less than 200 points to go until they get the win. As well, a little Blade Master <laughs> trade off there. I was kind of expecting them to do two anyway, because after the first one, they were just like, oh, do you know what, we must actually both do it again, which is, you know, it, it can happen, it can happen. But so far, things will slow down again. It's going to be more of a Team Snipers match here until one of these teams get badly weakened. But Romeo managed to get a nice clean kill there, considering how weak he actually was. Ready managed to trade him off. Excellence gets a further trade there. And now Stason's going to try and find out exactly if Lazarus are going to push or they're going to sit back and keep their lead. But it looks like they are going to sit back. Hell gets one of his own. Man and Master finish off deadly in the end. But the two members here, they almost managed to take down the two members of Lazarus. But great job from Lazarus keeping him back there. G Launcher coming out at the exact right time there as uh, Lord Mano in the center of the map. Very low on health. He's playing a little risky game as Master Frezzy does find him and take him out. Deadly finds Divine King. They're going to have a little battle there as Deadly tries to dodge that flash grenade. Uh, now Divine King. Finds several players on the other team, though he does seem to be holding his own at the moment. Stason going to push forward and probably take him down quite quickly. That's a nice grenade there. Yeah. But he's baited him out, though. The three members of Lazarus were waiting for the call. I think that was from, uh, I don't know if that's from Romeo and Manu. I can't really tell from the actual, uh, Whoa. on the spectator side. But you saw that one member was sitting there and they're waiting to have three members of Lazarus to bait him to clean up straight away. But it wasn't the case anyway. As you can see there, Manu managed to get one of his own. Any 20 points left for Lazarus. And it looks like they will take this, depending on how this bottom mid goes, but that doesn't matter anyway. Stassen does manage to take him down there. Ten points left for Lazarus. One elimination is all it's going to take. And there we go. I believe Excellency took that one down. And Lazarus does take the first game of the series. And that, again, we are seeing some very close games today, Harry. That was very back and forth. Looks like I came back at the right time, I it think, did. in terms of exciting. the close series and all that bits and pieces. But I like what they did there. I don't know who it was. I want to say it was Romeo, but it probably wasn't. But having that one guy at the double box, just literally just trying to bait them out just to say, you know, hello, I'm here. But like, actually, there's three of them with snipes waiting for them to peek around that corner. And obviously, one shot from all those, uh, all three of them was just going to take one down anyway. But I like the little plays there. I don't think they planned it from the beginning, but it was just a little play they made probably as they were pushing up waiting for them to actually try and make a call because it was actually Infinity's call. They're the ones who had to actually push up and make the first move because they didn't have the lead in the end. And as you can see there, Romo go neutral, but he did much better than neutral in my opinion. Even though he went 10 and 10, he got those cost-effective plays. You know, the, the kills that really, really mattered there. And Excellence just doing his usual stuff with uh, a nice KD of 2 and 0. I really enjoy watching games on Europe streets, though. Again, we haven't seen that many of them recently, but they're just so interesting how the team sort of... It's like chess. Stay back. Yeah, it is a little bit like chess. Mm. Like they stay back, then you get... One member wandering through the middle. You get someone trying to bait out from the side there, as we saw from Divine King. Just, just some very interesting strategies. Yeah, we, we, to be fair, you see some of that in some TDMs, but I think, yeah, you're right. In Europe Streets, you do see it a lot more because the game's a lot slower paced, and probably the next slowest play, uh, pace game is probably something like Skyscrapers but, or right. something like that. But yeah, with Europe Streets, because it's so narrow, it's actually very hard to get any flanks around because, you know, if you've got the slight height advantage, you could say, like on either side of the map, you know, when you go by mid, it's very easy to get taken down, but sometimes it's actually good to go by mid just due to the fact that they don't expect you to go all the way around or you may get some players who hide behind some of the boxes or some of the crates or maybe some of the vehicles just to you know wait for that important call to maybe throw a frag up or maybe just to try and like wait for that call to actually try and get behind them so that way they've got enough info to know exactly the full scenario of what's going on in game either way Lazarus do take the first win of the series we are now in best out of five territory so it's not quite over yet and I believe Round two is just about to get started, Harry. Will um, will Edge be able to start to make a comeback here? Let's see. 
Yeah, we'll find that now. Map number two on Atrium. Atrium, a very oh. aggressive map here. And already, frags have been traded left, right, and centre. But look at this. Lazarus going straight for the middle because they know B-point is very difficult to take back. And I've noticed they've done that on every control yeah. point. They did it on Farming Complex, and now they're doing it on Atrium here. But it looks like some frags on the board for Infinity. Oh. Mazda 2, that's three down now, but X has managed to get two of his own. That was a very, very important trade because if they didn't get it, then Infinity would have had full map control. Right, exactly. And now Lord Mano does seem to be completely on his own in point A. I'm sure Edge are going to try and put a stop to that one. As Stason does come up right behind Romeo, takes him down very easily. And then between them, it looks like they're going to be taking down quite a few members. Oh, no, wait. Take that back. Divine King comes back, takes down Stason. He's going to find an easier limb on Dadly there, who already had quite low health. And uh, yeah, Lord Mano and Excellency do some serious work as well. That looks like they have a nice double limb. Excellency there. It looks like they've stabilized these points. Yeah, I was going to say that until Stason got a double on the exact same time oh. as Jason, which is typical. But yeah, I love Divine King so far. Like his avalanche and his Odin has been so on point. Every time I see him in an Odin battle, like he seems to win it almost every time. He's almost watching like an EU version of Gentrix here. But look at it now. It's going to be going back and forth here. Three down now wow. for Infinity. And you see Excellence with another double of his own. Stason must have kept one, but it's going to get taken down very shortly. But it doesn't be the case. Man's get a double in the end. But Lazarus almost trip capped here. But now Infinity are going to slowly get these caps back one after the other. They will most probably get A, but they will get B soon. I don't think <laughs> Romeo or uh, Deadly actually saw each other. They were literally right next to each other then. But it's very back and forth. But Lazarus and turn the objective. So on point here. I think Romeo and Excellency both just got double eliminations there as they are quite comfortably fighting for this game. 400 points ahead. Hale does use the G launcher there, but it's no good. It doesn't stop Divine King from getting that double limb. And now Excellency on low health, but it doesn't, and, and Lord Mana also on low health, but I don't think it matters too much. They are using their health so well, getting these sneak attacks. Yeah, it's excellent, especially I saw there. He would have a quick peek on spawn just to see if he can get enough information because if enough of his character model was actually out on spawn, then he would get picked off straight away. He was very, very low. But he would have a quick peek, pull back, bait and switch, and then literally help his teammate because that way, you know, as, as your thought process will go into this game, you go for the person who's straight in front of you, like first in front. But look at it now. Divine Killing Roman get another frag on the board, and that's three down now again for Infinity. Infinity mm. have absolutely no answer of any way to try and come back from this, and it looks like this will be a 2 0 for Lazarus as things are panning out here. Yep, it looks like it. There's no way that uh, no way the Edge are going to get 600 points in the time it takes Lazarus to get 10. As double eliminations aside, Lazarus does take the second one down. They are one game away from their third place finish here and the 50 points and $120 that come with that. 247 points for Excellency then. The next ones were 150 and 147. That was his two teammates, so I think he'll be quite happy about that. But yeah, it was just ridiculous. You know, Excellency, like, he's one of the best bait and switches I've ever seen. Yeah. He abuses every kind of fundamental in this game. So even if he's super weak, he's always behind someone, or he'll try and get a quick scare out before he gets taken down. It's very, very little plays and these small talks you have to actually consider. And it's so, so important in this game because, you know, if you keep that person alive and you always put yourself in front with a lot more more health than your teammate then you know you're, there's so many situations you can put yourself in and it helps out so much and as you can see there Romeo five eliminations ten assists contributing to 15 frags there Mano pretty much doing the same but with positive two and contributing to 14 but Reddy did have a lot of assist eliminations but it just wasn't his day in that map I think something that you've highlighted a lot with Excellency there as we see his score, once again, 247 points, 12 limbs, 7 assists. It's, it's just how important movement is in Guns of Boom. Because obviously, you know, the guns fire for you. You know, you don't have auto assist, auto aim, sorry, in... Um, in pro play, obviously, that would be a little bit silly. Imagine. Uh, and so aiming is important, but I feel like movement is just even more important than the aiming, getting in the right position. Because if you can sneak up behind someone, shotgun them in the back of the head, it's going to be very difficult for them to come back and eliminate you. Oh, definitely. Like, it, even at some stage, like, you know, in most FPS titles, bait and switching is in everything. But it's a lot more important. I don't think some people actually understand how important it is. I will try and point out a lot more for anyone watching this when we actually cast his game, because I want to actually prove as we watch these games why it's so important with certain types of movement you see here but as we go into map number two here potentially the last map if Lazarus might detect this 3-0 but it's not going to be the case Stassen must get that first frag on the board here but Divine King managed to get taken down Ready gets a further one 
and take a nice little lead for Infinity here. Yeah, Master Freddy gets a double elimination there and they have managed to wipe out Lazarus, but Lazarus come back. Master Freddy just hiding around that corner. Look at that, Romeo tries to get a snipe. Doesn't work out though, as Hale does get him down first. Lord Mano does shut down Master Freddy and now Divine King gonna take on Deadly, but Deadly has the cover and he has the help. And so Divine King does get taken down. This isn't looking good for Lazarus so far. I do love that corner spot you spoke about before, but it's also very common at the same time. Normally people will wait for any gunfire to happen before that, uh, before they actually make a move here, which is understandable. I'd, I'd probably do the same, especially if, <laughs> if I was weak. But looking at it now, you've got three members of Lazarus, you know, only literally just coming out of spawn. Mano's waiting here just to see if anyone can go past so he can get that first shot. Uh, I think they have actually started to realise that now they've actually got no map control at all. They need to try and get something done here. The Vine King does try, gets deadly damage quite a lot, but not enough to get taken down as well. Double elimination, nice stuff there from Mano. Romeo gets one for himself. He's going to try and get a triple elimination now from Mano. I thought that was going to go to Romeo, but Mano might have to take him down. Maybe Romeo told Mano to take the triple so he can get extra points yeah. on the board. And look how much it's helped. They were down 60 points. Now it's only six between both these teams here. But Lazarus do now have low health and presumably uh, Edge come back mm. having fully healed, although it looks like they've got a slight lead now in the Elims, but only very slight. Like, the Lazarus really have evened out the scores here, and now taking the lead with Divine King. Uh, Edge really needs to start taking down Lazarus, or they are just going to get further and further into the lead. Yeah, Divine King's rifle play is so good right now. He seems to use it at the most opportune moment and at the perfect angles. He knows exactly when the best time is, but Deadly's quite weak here. Excellence knows this, I think. He's trying to find out a way to at least try and get him out, but not be the case. Excellent does get taken down, but Romeo managed to rush in, get the trade here. Romeo gets a double. He's going to be looking for that triple. Won't get it because Divine King, cheeky guy, managed to clean him up anyway, but Romeo gets another one anyway. So that's the entire team of Infinity on spawn, and it's the question is how are they going to break out of this? Yeah, I mean, they, they've completely fallen by the wayside there. Despite a strong start, Lazarus managing to take this one back is bad news. Uh, Edge going to all stay together there, but deadly low on health and in Excellency's line of sight. Excellency just waiting for the right time to strike. Divine King got that sniper out ready to go, but does get taken out by Hale. Hale really showing off his skills with the sniper today. Yeah, Hale's a great player. And as you can see, they're roaming with a double, but ready with a double of his own just to trade things back. And now Reddy's very weak now. He's literally one shot of anything can do him in, and he does get done in the end. Divine King and Manum has a further the lead, just a little bit more, but Stassen here, he's trying to do what he can, but I feel like Infinity have just been sitting on spawn the entire time, trying to wait for something to happen rather than create these opportunities here. Yeah, Romeo now sitting back as well, just keeping an eye on what Mastiff's doing. Does get some damage off of him with the sniper. Going to try and finish the job. Gets some backup by Lord Mano, who's going to take on Stasen. But Stasen with the G-Launcher does take down Lord Mano. He had low health himself, so Divine King takes him down very easily as well. And uh, Romeo's still sitting back here, healing up a little bit, and just gets taken out. Typical. Yeah. <laughs> but I love the patience, though. That's the patience you really need. That's basically discipline from what you saw from him. But now... Infinity, it's going to be a real struggle here. They're trying to do what they can, but Hale is getting, trying to get taken down here, but it must get one. Doesn't manage to get two, but I don't think it's enough here. There's going to be two frags until Lazarus take this home. Deadly gets one, but most of these players on Infinity are all weak. They're probably all going to try and sit back and snipe, but I don't think it's going to work here. A minute left. Deadly must get one, but it's Delaney inevitable. Lazarus take the third and final map here and win that third place playoff. Yeah, quite convincingly, I think. Very convincingly. Unfortunate for Edge. But hey, you know, they've come fourth. That's not so bad. That is still 40 points for them, whereas fifth to eighth only get 25 points. So that's a big jump between fifth place and fourth place. So they can't be too upset with that. No, I wouldn't be upset too much. I'd probably be upset with the fact that a couple of those games were, I wouldn't say a landslide, but I'd say Lazarus won that very comfortably. And that's when you kind of notice for if it's kind of neck and neck, then there's only little things you've got to improve on. But on those kind of maps, I think there was a lot of things we had to improve on. Forza were very passive, which normally they play quite passive anyway in certain circumstances. But I felt like on a map like that, it's very difficult to try and get out of spawn. Or, you know, I think maybe we've got to try and think about some of the counter attacks they need to play out rather than just sitting back and trying to snipe. Because Lazarus obviously know how Infinity actually plays some of these maps. And you saw, you know, Romeo sitting in the corner, you know, waiting to get that first shot, which is n normal anyway on Guns of Boom, just due to the fact that you want to try and get the first shot before you get taken down before the next wave happens. But as well as having map control, they had all the angles. They knew, Lazarus knew exactly where Infinity were going to come from due to the fact that 
there's only three ways. But for Infinity, they could come from any angle, from yeah. the windows, the bottom mid, or from one of the sides, the crates. You know, it's there's so many more opportunities for Lazarus to try and take him down compared to Infinity towards the end of that game now. It makes for some really interesting gameplay with Guns of Boom Esports because it's the fact that the time the time to kill is so long, but there's no re respawning health. So, like, every single point of damage counts towards the end of the game. Uh, so we're going to take one look at the bracket to see where it is now in one of our final updates of the day. And, uh, well, all it's going to do is update to... I believe we're going to take it. There we go. There it is. I knew it was going <laughs> Update to show that Lazarus did take down Infinity 3-0. to zero. We only have one series left here in the EU portion of the broadcast, and that is going to be the grand final back-to-back -back versus Knights of Honor. Yeah, back-to-back -back Knights of Honor. You know, it's definitely going to be a series you definitely want to watch. Knights of Honor, I want to see how they pro uh, progress and how they enter this grand final. I want to see how back-to-back -back managed to stabilize because... Knights of Honor have been doing really well in this cup. I was actually quite surprised considering because, you know, we, we always see them in that top eight, top six kind of spot, but it's nice to see them in the grand final again compared to the uh, compared to the earlier days. But yeah, it will be an interesting one. And I do apologize. I did say both of these series <laughs> probably won't be free. I was, oh, cast this curse. The first thing it's a damn free. <laughs> I, I, was, I was literally just going to bring this up, Harry. I was going to say you said <laughs> that... the words out of your mouth. It's like <laughs> You said that we weren't going to have any 3-0s. Well, hopefully you'll be right. Will we get an exciting 3-2 to two finish in the grand final? Don't go anywhere. You'll be able to find out very soon. More Gunter Boom coming up.
Welcome back. It's Guns of Boom. It's the finals of Challenger Series Season 2, Week 2. This is Lethal. I'm Falcone, and we are very excited to bring you this one. Yeah, it should be a very interesting one indeed. We're going to see if Back to Mac managed to take another cup to help solidify their place at Gamescom for the Pro Series in Germany, or if Knights of Honor managed to uh, get some nice, decent points on the card. Yeah, it's not the final that either of us necessarily expect to see, but it's one that we're very happy with. And, and again, bold prediction from Mr. Harry Lethal here on my left. He was saying <laughs> that this would be, you know, go all the way to game five, go right down to the wire. Yeah, I don't think it'll be a free over. I reckon a cheeky game four or five might happen. It might happen, but uh, it depends how Knights of Honor actually play here. You know, for the fact that they've taken down Dust to Esports and Lazarus, that's a big statement. And I'm hoping they don't crash and burn in the grand final 3-0 because either they you know, run out of stamina or they're not going to play as well, or it could just be that back-to-back -back are just that damn good right now. But we'll have to have how things are panned out. It's going to be a very good one, I think. And they are, you know, back-to-back, -back, formerly known as Team Noble. They are, a, they are a team that, if you've been following Guns of Boom Esports, you will know a lot about them. And uh, they, they're not going to be messing around. They want those points. They want to qualify for Pro Series Germany. Yeah, it's um, a bit of a weird one in previous seasons because we didn't really see too much of them in the uh, winter and spring season. But somehow they're just like, oh, yep, yeah, just let you know we're here. Like, you know, <laughs> coming first straight away in that last cup and now guaranteed second, which is great stuff for them. I'm very happy to see back to back back like you know coming into the summer challenger series and it's looking very good for them because you know i've seen them since march and all oh, great bunch of guys they work very very hard they're very passionate probably one of the passionate teams on yeah. the circuit here not just in eu but just worldwide in general but now can they win a second one back to back in a row and i reckon it is possible but it depends how well knights are going to do here in this grand final do you find when you're casting back to back that you end up saying the word back just a lot of time i did it back to back, <laughs> make it come back now coming back onto the point back to back <laughs> i did it in season one actually like literally when because that's how they started off as back to back back in season one and i kept saying it so much and i think it turned into a crunch word for me <laughs> in the end because i just said it so often but with Jug now, you know, we know these players have been around for a very long time. They've, they've been there, they've done it, you know, they've got the t-shirt and all that kind of retrospect, you know. They haven't seen too much of them since season one, but they've made a dramatic improvement here. And I'm hoping not just in this cup, but we'll see the level of consistency from then as we go on further and further as the weeks go by. But seeing back-to-back -back return as well is a big thing to see. Yeah, it's exciting. It was uh, unfortunate that they weren't there at Pro Series Brazil last weekend. You know, I'd have liked to, I'd like to see them. I'd love to them. see a back to back versus impact. That would have been a good one, yeah, I reckon. Back to back to back to back to back. <laughs> even even the word impact sounds like kind of like back to back. Maybe I say I'm, impact maybe quite a lot as well, though. So it's like yeah. impact, <laughs> making an impact here. <laughs> in I mean, I must have said it at least three times last event. I, was, I said it way too many times, I think. But oh, I mean, the more that you know during Pro Series Brazil, the more I cast with Stannis and Stannis. I know you're watching. The more <laughs> Stannis's puns started coming out. <laughs> And more things like making an impact started coming. <laughs> Stannis is the king of dad jokes and puns. I think that's the main thing. But I laugh at always dad jokes and puns anyway. Absolutely. That's the main it's thing. Great. But um, I, I wonder what you thought as well, because like um, I know uh, as you, you know, coming into the scene and you haven't seen too much of Knights of Honor, it must be nice seeing a team like back to back because of the fact that, you know, they've done really well season one and it's nice to actually see them at a similar, uh, sorry, the Summer Challenger series because obviously you haven't met them yet and they're actually one of the most passionate teams going. Yeah, it's very cool. I mean, from, from what I've heard from what you were saying before, yeah, they're, they're a great bunch of guys. I can't wait to hopefully get the chance to meet them someday. It's just, it's always, with all esports, I find it's always a little bit better when you do get to meet people. Yeah. As a, as a caster, when you get to meet people, sort of get to know their personalities. Uh, and it's something, again, shout out to Stannis, some of the content that, that he's been making and putting on the Guns of Boom YouTube channel, you really do see the players' personalities from that. And if you, have, if you haven't checked that out, I do highly recommend it. If you want to know the the, the faces and the personalities behind the names that you see utterly destroying their opponents here as we are just about to start the first game of the finals. Here we go, Europe Street, let's get started. Again, another slow TDM to start off with, just to ease into this grand final here. And already Nokia with that first frag on the board and T-Mac managed to get mixed with that sniper. Yep, it's going to be one of those games again that's a little bit on the slow side, but every single movement is going to be calculated as Dobar takes down Killing Machine there very quickly. 
And uh, Johnny takes down Nokia. A little fight between Mix and Johnny. Mix has taken down, and we got all the back and forth mm. happening now as Dobar and T Mac do take down Mix and Gonza. Nice of Honor have a nice little lead at the moment. Yeah, it's looking like a good lead here, but how long will they last? That's the question here. T Mac with a nice snipe there. Mix with two of his own, so that lead is definitely Whoa. deteriorating very slowly. T Mac almost gets Whoa. taken down, but G launch your mass to finish him off fair. But Killing Machine also with a snipe of his own. But Notorious is trying to do anything he can to try and get the damage on the board. Three members on this right side here. I think they're trying to wait for an opportunity to try and push, try and get as much damage on Migs as possible. But he's not even in the line of fire here. But he will be now. That's a great play from him, as you saw there. He was looking around bottom middle. But I think he was standing there as well to wait for Gonza to kind of like wait for him to make that play, wait for him to push, and then he'll come back round again. Great stuff from them. Yeah, he turned around just in time. Gonza almost getting the triple elimination a moment ago as he is going to take down Dobra just about with the sniper. The Killing Machine takes down Shani and Nokia takes down Notorious. Back-to-back -back are on a roll. As Nokia gets T-Mac as well. And yes, now Dobar's making a little bit of a comeback there, getting Nokia and Migs. But Guns are on elimination streak. Back-to-back -back are killing it this game. They are. They've all suddenly just completely turned it around. I was a little bit worried for Nokia there because using, using that avalanche at far range and it was just trying to pick off as much tick damage as possible. But managed to clean things up anyway. But look at now, Notorious and T-Mac with two frags of their own. Nokia managed to get a trade. Gonza with a trade as well. And I feel like any time Knights of Honor try and make this comeback here, back to back I've got a way to trade off and then increase it again afterwards. Already now, 88 uh, point gap between these two teams here. Killing Machine getting another double elimination. They helped a lot. But T-Mac does take down Killing Machine. Looks like he's going to have a little fight with Mix as well. Does manage to take him down just about. Gianni takes down Gonza. Now Killing Machine coming around the corner slowly but surely with that sniper rifle out and ready to go. To see what they can do here. It's going to be quite passive now. They're just waiting for another entrance for them to try and push on. But it doesn't matter. Killing Machine is just having absolutely none of it. Push straight in. Gonza with a double. We're looking for a triple, but it's quite rare to see triples and four at ones on a map like this because it's so easy to pull back. But look at this. Three members there are actually all together oh. and looking away, but somehow, some way, T Mac was still able to get a double. But I think the damage was done now. I think back to back can clean up. Yes, they are. So Nokia is going to get a double. Almost a triple but certainly wasn't the case, but the damage has been done, I think. If only there was a grenade or a G launcher available there, that would have been the perfect situation as Dobar and Notorious take down Gonza together. Notorious gets a little double on him there by taking down Killing Machine as well. Uh, ah, only, only 40 points oh. in it. Knights of Honor still have a shot here, but Killing Machine taking down Notorious. And now the team grouped together. Look at this push. Taking down T-Back, taking down Johnny as well. Yes, the G-Launcher does some serious damage there, but Lazarus two points away from taking the map. Yeah, two points still. There's like one frag in it until back to map managed to take this now, but they're playing passes to make sure they can get something going here. They're not getting overzealous or pushing up too much, but look at this now. It's five point gap between both of these teams and there's gonna be a snipe battle between Notorious and one of the players. I think it's Gonza, no but way. back to back. Oh dear me, I literally could not believe it because I felt like back to back were playing that perfectly fine, but it just wasn't the case. I am so surprised by what we just, what just happened, Harry? <laughs> <laughs> so basically, with both of those teams, like you know, even neither team was actually too damaged. I mean, they knew it was going to be kind of like a snipe off, but I can understand why Bats have back done that just due to the fact that you know they had no reason to push. It's actually not Zavano who need to make the push for themselves, but it just didn't seem to be the case. It was uh, yeah, absolutely crazy stuff. Uh, it's, uh, I, I literally uh, right at the end there, I could not tell what was happening. <laughs> it's insane just how close that got and how. The win was taken, but there you go. That is just the first game. Once again, it's best out of five. It's the finals. You know, we've got to give this one some time to breathe. Got to give both teams a good chance to show what they've got. And boy, did they show what they've got with back-to-back, -back, you know, Killing Machine, Nokia, Gonza and Migs. I their positioning was just so good. It was good. Like, you saw towards the end, like, they weren't more focused on angles. It was more about... Um, just gelling together and in case someone does get a flank round or, you know, if you've got two snipers sniping the same person, then that's a quick frag and then that's the job done. But it just didn't seem to be the case there. But you saw, I think I just saw someone over 227 points. I just missed it, sadly. But whoever that was, on a map like Europe Streets, it can be quite difficult to even extend yourself away from the rest of the team. But great stuff from them.
Yeah, generally the points do seem to be pretty low across the board here. Killing Machine 106, Dobro on 98. <laughs> whoever that mystery player was, that I'm sure you, those of you watching, can let us know. Uh, fantastic job to them. Uh, it's such a, it's such an exciting um, map, and it's such a, it's exciting in a very different way, isn't it? Because it's such a twist on Guns of Boom gameplay, which Guns of Boom gameplay is usually very, very intense. It's very non-stop. You know, person runs in with a shotgun, maybe sniper support, bam, 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 respawn, go again. Because your streets are so slow, it's calculated, finding those corners, finding those positions. Uh, I don't know. I think it's a joy to watch. It is a joy to watch. That's why you know we talked about it before. Like some of these TDM maps are like. Yes, you know, it's completely understandable as to why. Everyone's used to, you know, the hectic massacre and mess of most of the game types here and there, but that's mainly because of the objectives, you know. With Hill and Control Point, you know, if you see no sign of aggression, that team normally will guarantee lose, no, no matter what, unless it's Hill and they're trying to hold, like, certain points to bait them into it, you know, little plays like that. But TDM, with most maps, is quite standard. Like, you will see it on Europe Streets, you'll see it on Skyscrapers, you may see it on, see it on Military Warehouse, depending on the scoreline and, like, how close it is to actually finishing up. But, yeah, it's, it's good to see because you know with some maps it can be like checkers where you've got to try and push each other forward kind of like an ice cream scoop where you try and like push them up until they can't get pushed anymore and then you've got players like chess where it's like you know so many points on the map you can actually push it's just a matter of how good your awareness is going into this but map number two it will be an atrium and we're going to see if knights of honor can try and equalize this johnny gets a very quick first strike there going to take some two bar and it's back and forth to the max pretty much as Jug I was going to say take the lead, but no, back to back now, take a very slight lead as the battle for the points begin. Uh, point A being captured by back to back, though, and it looks like Minx is going to take it with a double elimination. Yeah, even if back to back got A and C, it's looking good for them so far. They're trying to gain map control as much as they can, and they're trying to trip cap as well. Very cheeky of them there, but one gets taken now. The Johnny Mask get two, finally gets taken out by Killing Machine, but Killing Machine is going to try and get second one of his own, and he doesn't. So Diver must have take one as well. Three down for back to back, but look at this. Straight away, double elimination there, and you're going to see what else they can do. It's a massive mess for B point. The Johnny with a triple elimination. He should not have got away with that, but somehow, some way, he, he was in a massive open area and still got a triple that's a statement there triple blade master as well like all three of those were with the knife dobar going for it the blade master uh, migs with the g launcher does take down dobar nokia takes on notorious now it looks like back to back once again are getting control but johnny comes in behind again with the blade master guns are going to try and contest and get that point c though as this seems to be where all of the action is right now g launcher from notorious like it misses but it's still just about enough damage nokia takes down notorious and now once again, the back-to-back -back seem to be in control of C. I'm still surprised on that triple. He should not have got it. He was <laughs> open in B, and he had plenty of opportunities, but I feel like back to back must have just went in one at a time and just gave him the clean kills. But even if you go in one at a time, how on earth did he get away oh, with it? It makes wow. no sense. But going back to the game now, so far, neither team has managed to stabilize. They are just going back and forth with the frags. A double limit from Dajani is going to try and get a triple, Ooh. which he does. But is this going to be the turning point now? It seems like it still isn't after that triple now, because back to back seems to find a way to keep him back. Another double in the end. Three down again for Knights of Honor. And now, is this back-to-back's -back chance to try and increase their lead and take this second map? Johnny on 216 points, I just want to point out. I think he's had tr two triples this game on, on an amazing roll, even though the team aren't quite winning. Is Nokia going to take down T-Mac there? But Johnny comes in behind him, does get him down as Dubar heads towards point A. Looks like he's taking it uncontested. Tries to back up his team as well. Mix takes down Johnny with an elimination streak. Victoria still put an end to that streak. And now back to back, seriously getting some work done as they're going to try and push towards point A. I do love what I did, they did there as well with Knights of Honor. They'd send one C just to quickly try and get something done, just to kind of, you know, remove any kind of, um, like, kind of trying to cause a distraction and then send the rest to A. But it didn't seem to work anyway because they all got taken down and I think they've run out of answers here. I think it's going to be a little too little too late here. It's just a matter of time. Back to back, have two of the points. They're not even going for the triple. They're just trying to get the frags yep. to add to the tally of the points. And that is back to back with the second map win 2-0 in the series now and potentially one more for back to back to win Summer Challenge Series Cup number two. Yeah, that win was a little bit more comfortable than the first one as well. Uh, and I guess that's sort of what you get with control points. Score twins a lot greater. And it's the kind of game where once you do sort of get a little bit of map control, unlike TDM, where you sort of, you know, you wipe the other team, then they wipe you. Then you, At least when you wipe a team in control points, the name of the game is 
get those points, start scoring points off of them, and then defend them for every second that you can. So you tend to get a little more open games there, and back-to-back -back showing what they're made of. Uh, I'm sorry, Harry, but this might be a 3-0. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm not going to predict scores ever again. <laughs> I can predict a winner, but I'll never predict. <laughs> can well, predict would you score. would you have predicted back to back as the winner from the series coming yeah. in? Yeah, I probably would. But now that I've said that, it's going to be a reverse sweep. Yeah, I mean, I'm <laughs> asking you in retrospect. That's a little bit unfair. You get to cheat a little bit there. As Johnny with 254 points and Nokia with 235, these are some high scoring plays here. Yeah, Nokia was just going in. I was watching some of his avalanche plays. And he was barely missing his aim simply on point. But Dejani, you know, the amount of times he got the uh, Blade Master, and when he got that triple in the middle, he shit. I'm so annoyed. He should not have got that. I don't know how on earth he <laughs> did. It just makes genuinely irritating. I'm tilted. Yeah, it just makes no sense. But I don't know. Maybe I didn't see it correctly. Maybe some of the members of back to back were all weak. That was why he managed to take advantage of the situation. I'll have yeah. to, I'll have to try and watch that back. But HM, you know, we've gone from New York Streets, one of the slowest TDMs, to HM, uh, you know, a very fast pace control point map and you saw there that ne neither team was actually able to stabilize even though back to back had, had a uh, 200 point lead they still never got that full setup where they got a trip cap they have two people up top one in front of bottom middle and one person waiting from around the corner on spawn that's right we didn't really see full any full setups there but what they did they did a great job just keeping them at bay just trying to suffocate them as much as possible towards the end and just not giving them the opportunity i just feel like knights of honor just need to work on their counter strategies a little bit when they come off spawn when they're in that kind of scenario you know it's great having a full setup and know exactly what to do tactically when you have the control but when you don't have the the, uh, the control you see a lot of teams kind of fail to try and capitalize on the situation of how to actually try and push things back when the uh, situation is not in their favor it's like you said though we did see some pretty amazing plays from knights of honor there we did see in particular johnny i know i know that you're tilted for <laughs> <laughs> with the Blade Master, but he then got another triple limb after that, um, which looked a little bit more earned. Well, it not, did. not not earned. Like the triple limb with the Blade Master was earned. Yeah, whether it was, was definitely earned. Whether it was um, whether it was Edge's stupidity that that earned the point. I don't. Oh, sorry, not Edge's. Uh, no uh, back to back stupidity yeah. that earned the points. Whatever he got it, but he got another triple limb after that. Johnny earning a lot of the points for the team, uh, really showing what he's made of and. Given that we're, I believe, moving into TDM again next, uh, we'll see if he can continue that momentum and maybe when they don't have to worry about control points and, and it not mattering them controlling parts of the map as much, maybe then his points will make more of a difference. It will, yeah. It's going to be a weird one because for Knights of Honor to actually reverse sweep against a team like Back to Back, I don't know because, like... Don't get me wrong, like that first map was very close. That one was also close, but I felt like back to back found the answer they were looking for to stabilize and take it away. It really is going to depend because, you know, with TDMs, it can be very 50 50. And I think back to back won't mind that because they just know they just got to win one of these TDMs and then they're fine, unless this is the last TDM. It depends on the situation. But I'm not going to lie, Dan, I'm looking at the map and it looks like it will be more in favor of back to back. So the 3 0 could happen here, but now that I've said it, I'm most probably wrong. So why do you believe this is more in favour of back to back? Because with back to back, they've just got the correct fundamental of how you should actually play. So they're passive when they need to be, they're defensive when they need to be, they're aggressive when they, when they need to be. But the coordination is so on point, and even in previous seasons and in previous cups, it seems to be not maybe not their strongest TDM, but one of the, one of the top ones up there. Well, T Mac and Gonzo both just got double eliminations as we move into this game. As back to back take a marginal lead, but really not that far ahead. Notorious gonna find Killing Machine there. Sneak was up sort of behind him there and gets a very clean kill there. A double elimination there from Notorious. Double elimination there from Nokia. Wow. Double limbs are happening all over the place. And Nokia has absolutely no fear. You saw it was like two or three hundred HP. But even then, he still tried to flank around and just be an absolute nuisance. Because even though it's only a, a small play, which some people may think it doesn't mean much, it actually meant quite a lot because that way you're distracting Knights of Honor enough to stop them from coming out of their base. But look at this. T-Mac with a double elimination on his own. Trying to get a double blame muscle, which he does. Knock you with another double there. He's going to try and go for the triple, but it's not the case. Though had more than enough health to take him down there. And now things will go a little bit neutral here as it's going to be a slight stalemate. Whoa, okay, Mix just runs into that trap now, as now the battle begins. G-Launcher does come out, and Notorious does take down Nokia, but Nokia takes down Notorious and Jani with his very own grenade launcher for double in there. T-Mac gets a nice snipe just in the nick of time on Killing Machine. 
Uh, the killing machine then gets him straight back by the looks of things. I like that for Mix as well. He's at a disadvantage because of that ramp from Dejani, but instead pulls back, waits for another opportunity, and his teammates there to clean things up. But Mix finally managed to take it down. Took quite a while. It was actually quite delayed here. Mix tried to push in, not the case, get some damage done there, but Dobar gets another one. That's a double for him. He could go for the triple, but I think Noki's got too much health here, and Dobar will have to pull back. Yeah, T Mac does take down Noki there, and uh, Notorious finds a lot of uh, a lot of back to back together. T-Mac looks like he may be walking into a track there, trap there. Jani does get taken down very easily by Nokia. Nokia doing some serious work as uh, a lot of Jug just got taken down there back to back. Yeah, with Killing Machine and the Sniper, it's two things you don't really want to see. And when you've got him right now absolutely going off, it makes perfect sense as to why then. Dejani managed to take one down anyway on Nokia. If he gets his second one, so important, he managed to take Killing Machine down as well, but he's so weak. He may just barely be able to survive there due to the incineration damage. But look at now, Mix and Nokia get another two of their mm. own toys as well. But now it's 22 points left. Nokia's just barely staying alive, but all back to back need to do is wait for them to make that push on Knights of Honor. And as you can see, the Knights of Honor know that. They know they need to sit back. They know they have to let them come to them. But back to back, they can sit all day. They can sit and wait. And look at that G launcher there from Killing Machine. Just one more left, only 10 points left. It looks like it will be taken down and it will be in back to back. Managed to take that map number. Three. Yeah, it looks like it looks like we were wrong before when we said the back to back won the first two. It looked, I'm just looking at the score there. Actually, it was because the, the overlay said 1-0 in the last game. I think that was why. So we assumed it was, was going to be 2-0, but it, it is going to be 2-1. It was. I think it was because the first game was so hard to tell which of the teams had won <laughs> because it just like ended. And both the teams looked like they made it. No, the score was one on one. Now it's two and one with back to back taking their second map. So you weren't wrong. We're not going to be a three and this time, Harry. You're all good. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least I'm semi-right, I suppose. But we'll see how it goes. You know, Knights of Honor, that was quite clean from back to back. I told, I said it even before the map style. I think back to back will take this. It is one of their better TDMs. I don't know if it's their best, but it seems that their coordination and how they actually plan out what they're going to do on that map just seems to be next to none. It seems to be so on par here as we look at the scores. Yep, scores on the doors. Nokia with 201 points there. Very convincing score. Migs and T-Mac, a little bit lower than that, but that's okay. You know, there has to be, in each map, there has to be one player that really stands out, right? One or, or maybe two players that do surpass that 200 points. This time it looks like it was Nokia, but I didn't catch in the game who else had a lot of points. So we'll be uh, taking a look and finding out. Yeah, I was more looking at the strategies, really, just to see how things were panning out. Because even though I do like to look at the scores sometimes, I'm so focused on actually, right. the, the, you know, the in and out, the, you know, being in the moment kind of thing. <laughs> you know, we're looking at the elimination feed in the corner and we're looking at the strategy. Like, you, I occasionally just have a very quick glance at the score, but there's so much going on in the game of Guns of Boom. There's a lot to keep track of. And uh, yeah, it's just, there's so much to watch. It's just so much fun. Yeah, it's, it's so much to talk about as well. It's like in game, we could talk about the game for half an hour, even though it's like a three, three four or five maybe, minute game, but there's so much happening. In slow motion. Is that, is that the, the thing? Should we see if next season, maybe we can watch all of the games in slow motion? Slow mode. Like, proper, proper 30 <laughs> minutes to analyze every single game. No, no, you don't want to see that. You want to see no. games, 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 games. I know that's what you want to see. That's what we want to see. You don't want to see us. You just want to see as much gameplay as possible, <laughs> which is kind of what I want as well, which is why I always want to keep jumping back in, in one after the other. We both got the same sense of that, which is great. But game number four now, you know, at least back to back, they're going to be feeling comfortable, not as much pressure now. They're going to be feeling great, but they're not going to be feeling too much pressure anyway after winning that first cup but Knights of Honor this is a win I feel like they do need because mm -hmm. in the next one they've got to go through Lazarus and Dust 2 and <laughs> Eminence Pro Gaming and all the other teams it's you know very hard work for them but you know I think with this next map which I believe is going to be Subway again I feel like I'm not sure if I'm thinking of back in the day when back to back were good at this or if they are still good at Subway it doesn't get played too often now but we'll see how things pan out with map number four here on Subway I've got to tell you Harry I'm a big fan of King of the Hill as Doba oh. Makes the first strike with Migs and Nokia take down Journey and Dobar. Team Magnet's killing machine. And wow, back to back, having a really significant lead there. Look at Nokia just pushing forwards. He doesn't oh. care. He's just going for it. He should. I, I, I don't know if I agree with that play, but like that was a great triple elimination from him. But he was still pushing. He did. I don't know how he got away with so much damage done. Maybe because maybe that was the right play. Maybe the fact that if he pushed in so quickly that they didn't expect it, which was the yeah. right play. So he was also slowing them down, and then he'll respawn maybe by the time they get to the point anyway. So exactly, it's like a common spot, but it's also an orthodox at the same time as back to back now. 
up way ahead by 140 oh. points now. 100 and, sorry, 149 now, and it's actually ridiculous stuff here. But at least Knights of Honor now. I've got some frags on the board, and they're going to get that heal again. They are notorious with the triple elimination there as well. Really boosting Knights of Honor's score. As now Nokia are going to try and take back the point. Does end up in a Blade Master fight with Johnny though, and we know how that works out. Not very well. Killing Machine going to just turn around, not quite taking down Dope there, but does get T Mac. And uh, wow, all of the action taking place now. Notorious, very low on health, and several members are back to back pushing. Looks like Nokia. Oh no! Okay, Johnny does stop him. And I keep wanting to say someone's going to get this hill, and I keep being wrong. <laughs> We're here with this always contested. All the time. It always happens. I thought Nokia was going to get an easy triple there, but at least we got a double to clean things up with that flash. And even though two of those teammates were weak as well, Nokia gets one on the board. Killing Machine gets one as well. If they take it, the Johnny here, there could be a chance for them to take that. So to make sure they keep that hill back, but it's like not the case. But Killing Machine gets one. There's going to be one to his left, which is going to push in and help his teammate. But someone comes from behind. That's Dobar and Gonza managed to get a trade, but Nokia gets a frag on the board as well. It's so hectic now. Double elimination there from Nokia, and it looks like they'll finally, finally get this hill back. Fighting with everything they've got for that hill as Migs once again does what Nokia did earlier. Just runs forwards, gets a great grenade there on Knights of Honor. And Gonza sits back, protects that hill along with Killing Machine and Nokia. It looks like they've got it somewhat locked down here, though Dobar runs forward with the knife. Doesn't get it done. T-Mac ends up on his own on the point. Well, now he's contested by Mix, Killing Machine and Mix take him down. That is definitely a unique strategy back-to-back -back do, because the Nokia's done it and now one of the other pushing players done it. They're just yeah. pushing straight away and, and they don't care if they die or not. If you're weak, you might as well delay the whole team rather than just one player, which makes perfect sense. And it's actually helping them out quite a lot. I can see Nokia and some of us are doing it again, getting their top bridge control now. And yeah. there's three of them already pushing straight through. Elimination Street for Killing Machine. Might have to try and get two. Notorious with two now. Dejani's trying to pick Nokia off as well. And even though he flashes him, he still gets taken down. Nokia with a double. T-Mac to clean things up. Even though they got the heal, I just think it's way too little too late here. And back to back could maybe, just maybe, clean things up series three to one. Yeah, back to back. Going to make one final push there. Nokia does take down. Uh, well, he did anyway. Maybe not. Mix takes down Johnny though. Five points left to win. Back to back. Mix. Looks like he's going to take down T-Mac either way. They get there in the end. And they are the winners of the European uh, series in Challenger Cup Week 2. Back-to-back -back winning, back-to-back -back cups, as it <laughs> says in their name. Finally got the chance to say it. Cheers for winning the cups. Oh. At least I've got to say that silly pun. But two cups on the trot, 200 points. Or sorry, obviously probably a lot more than that now. Well, last last yeah. week, the first week, the points were doubled. Oh, right. Okay, so, I didn't know that. Yeah, okay. but because, the, uh, because there was a week that didn't happen, they That's were right. doubling points for week one. So, yeah, 300 points for back-to-back. -back. Yeah, you know, I think they're going to be feeling quite chuffed right now. That Pro Series um, Germany in Gamescom is looking very good for them right now. We, we know we've still got a few weeks left to go. Anything can happen. But I feel like at this point with back-to-back, -back, if they just stay in that top eight or top four every week, now leading up to event, I reckon they're going to be safe. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's going to be difficult for another team to catch up with them now. Yes, they might completely whiff one week and, and not not manage to make it to the top eight, but that's so unlikely. In Guns of Boom, you know, where, again, the skill gap is important. You know, the better teams do win 99% of the time. That's just the way Guns of Boom set up. It's the way that, the, the, you know, some of the, the best esports are set up. So, so skill-based. Yes, predictable, but also consistent. And it's exciting to see these teams do well again and again. And it's hard to see consistency in EU. But finally, we've actually done <laughs> it now with back-to-back. -back. And, you know, I hope they like Germany because not only will we be at the Gods of Boom in July, they could be at the Gamescom in August as well. So if you like Germany, <laughs> you're going to enjoy yourselves for the next two months. But, you know, I'm not going to say it's, it's still early days because... 300 points is a huge margin. It's massive when we obviously see the standings later on. But for now, though, I just feel like as long as they stay top four consistently, mm -hmm. that's great. But I think at some point, they'll want to try and win at least one more. So if they do, they can hide all the strategies, all the tactics, for not only for Gods of Boom, but also for Pro Series Germany. And I think that's very, very important. Let's take a look one final time at the bracket for the European Cup. Back to back, took down Infinity in semi-final one. Knights of Honor took down Lazarus in semi-final two. Lazarus won 3-0, the third place match, but then eventually back to back beat Knights of Honor 3-1, to winning the finals of Challenge Series Season 2, Week 2.
Yeah, it's great stuff from them. Back to back. It's nice to see the level of consistency now compared to the winter and the spring seasons. Lazarus, even though they came third, they are going to be happy because they still got enough points to keep them higher up to make sure they're in that bracket to go for that Pro Series spot. But if we saw Noble and Lazarus qualify for Pro Series Germany, then, you know, it should be very, very good going into that and also going to that event in general. Yeah, I mean, it's it's I mean, it's also just a great feeling winning a cup, isn't it? $400 for the team, that's $100 each. You know, that's... that's nice Some money to go out with, you know, pocket money. <laughs> it's a nice pocket money, isn't it? Let's take a look now at the season standings, just to take a look at where we are um, in, in terms of the whole cup. Back to back on 200 points there. Um, okay, I... I believe that was supposed to be 300 because I'm sure the points were doubled last week, but we'll uh, work that one out a little bit later. Lazarus in second with 125 points. That's quite a significant drop behind back to back now. Yeah, it is. You know, Lazarus are going to be, you know, in a comfortable state of mind, but they're still going to feel a lot of pressure because the team's under, underneath him, like Knights of Honor. They've been playing well this cup. Dust 2 Esports as well, a very, very strong team. You know, it's, I know sometimes they have very good online cups, sometimes it's not so good, but they're definitely a team you've got to be very careful with. And Infinity, you know, one of the God Online teams, again, another one you've got to be careful with. All these sleeper teams will just come out of the woodwork out of nowhere. And I think at some stage over the next couple of weeks, it's going to be a massive fight for that second place. I've just realised it was my mistake. Prize money was doubled. Ah, oh, okay. Points were not doubled. You can see where the confusion <laughs> was there. That's all right. Prize money was doubled. So yes, the, the standings were correct. But still, 75 point difference. It's going to be difficult for Lazarus and the other teams to catch up. That is us done for the European event. But we very soon are going to be following up with the NA Challenger Cup Week 2. So don't go anywhere. We have a, another... We're only halfway through the broadcast. Loads more Guns of Boom with Harry and me coming up very soon.